Good morning, my people. It's a beautiful day. We're coming to you live from Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Empress Golding, and I'm so happy that you're all tuned in. We are so blessed. We all woke up alive, and many people don't wake up alive. So we give thanks for life. Um, my people, we go in now into a topic I mentioned earlier uh, about breast cancer and rest in peace my girlfriends who have passed away because of breast cancer and to my girlfriends who have survived my people breast cancer it's not gender selective okay men also um can yes get yeah. breast cancer uh it doesn't only affect women okay although we do fall under the higher percentage so i want to just acknowledge our guest today um First of all, we have the Kiwanis Club of Providence, Montego Bay's <laughs> uh, Stacey Ann Williams, attorney at law, and she is the president. Welcome to Kingston. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you are putting on a, a run for breast cancer awareness and to help survivors, right? Yes, Okay, indeed we we're going to go into that in a second, Stacey. And next to you is our lecturer at the University of the West Indies, associate lecturer, associate lecturer mm -hmm. and consultant general surgeon at KPH, Kingston Public Hospital. Good morning to you, Mr. Anthony Roberts. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, let's get into the conversation. First of all, Mr. Roberts, tell me a little bit about the statistics uh, on breast cancer. Why so many people, if there are so many people, what are we looking at in Jamaica with breast cancer? What are, what are we seeing? Well, as you rightfully said, it's a disease that doesn't only affect women. Mm -hmm. It affects men as well. Mm -hmm. But there is a significant shift towards the female population. So the incidence of breast cancer ranks as number one across the female population not only in Jamaica, but across the entire Caribbean, mm. right? It's the number one cause of cancer in Jamaica amongst women. Mm. Unfortunately, it's the number one cause of cancer deaths related amongst women in Jamaica. Mm. And the frightening statistics, even though it's highly rated across the world as well, is that our population, you find that women present at an earlier stage compared to North America and Europe. Really? The median age of presentation in North America and Europe is probably close to 60. Our median age is around 52. Mm. And about 55 to 60% of our population actually gets breast cancer under the age of 60. My goodness. Right? And that's in the 25 to 59 age group, pre predominantly. What is it? What is it in terms of what type of Meaning cancer? Meaning like, like a, what is causing the cancer? If... I really, there must if we be an knew, answer if we, No, if we, if we knew that answer, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. You'd be watching. Well, there must be I'd a be doing theory. Tours where, uh, so the obvious biggest theory is that it's associated with women. So it's f female predilection. So we feel that it has a relationship to do with estrogen. Mm. We don't know what causes it, but we know that there are associated factors. Mm. So there's strong family history. There's increasing age, obviously female sex. So why I'm saying that is because you do have breast cancer amongst men, mm -hmm. but the incidence is very low compared to that of females. Mm -hmm. The problem with male breast cancer, and I don't want to go into that as much, is that when men do contract breast cancer, it is usually more aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's more usually at a later stage. Okay. Um, the problem that we have in Jamaica is that a lot of our women are presenting at a later stage, at a more advanced stage or have advanced disease, larger legions, spread to lymph nodes and that makes the treatment modalities that we offer here which is international standards mm -hmm. harder to treat the women mm. so what we want to achieve with in conjunction with kiwanis club mm -hmm. and especially jamaica cancer society is more awareness to women okay um i'm going to just quickly ask you doc before i move on to stacy our president sure. um how do we check how, well it starts with you offer? so it starts, so one of the things that we want to advocate is screening. Mm -hmm. Screening is basically a way of detecting either disease at an early stage or before it becomes, or precursor lesions that may cause that disease in asymptomatic patients who are at risk. So in this situation, we're talking about females. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you do a Google search, you'll see that screening ages vary. Yes. What we usually take in our, as our screening age is 40. Okay. which is what is accepted in North America. The problem is that we can't always take statistics from North America mm. because they have a different population. Their population is predominantly Caucasian. Ours is predominantly African, of African descent. And you have other races like Indians, Chinese, and stuff like that. But the problem is that 
even in North America, where they're trying to push their age for screening a little higher. And they're also, instead of screening with the mammogram on a yearly basis, they're trying to push it to two years. Let me give you some more statistics. About 15 to 20 percent of our patients actually have breast cancer under the age of 40. Mm. Right? So, therefore, if anything, what we should be trying to do is screen at an earlier Earlier, age. The problem is that the only screening modality that's available worldwide is the mammogram. Mm -hmm. And the sensitivity, which basically means the, how well the mammogram will pick up disease at an early stage, mm. increases as you get older. And that's just because of the physiological nature of the female's breast. Oh. As you get older, the female's breast becomes less dense. Mm. So therefore, the sensitivity or the ability of the mammogram in picking up disease know. increases. Mm -hmm. So even though we may want to screen people at a lower age, it's hard we don't to have anything to screen detect. them with. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So it starts with not only screening as in terms of doing the mammogram at, 50, at 40, at least. Mm -hmm. And that should be done on an annual basis. I don't think there should be any woman that should be getting a mammogram for the first time over the age of 50, for sure. Okay. And the problem is that if you look at society, and Shirley Ann Brown and you, like Gordon, can tell you from the Cancer Society, mm -hmm. that the women that they see for the first time at 60, even as old as 70. Mm. Right? So you should be trying to at least do your mammogram by the age of and 40. And the Cancer Society is free. I yes. think you can turn up, I, I don't know if it, I think it's free, they do provide um, services. They do provide services, but they, the problem is that they are overwhelmed, yeah. right? You can't have, I mean, we have about 2.5 to 3 million people in our population. Mm -hmm. And if you extrapolate numbers, at least a million of them are over the age of 40 who are women. Yeah. You can't have a million women turning up. Right, every there. year mm -hmm. to get a mammogram right. at the Cancer Society. Right. It's impossible. So check your GP. I, I, right. I, I check your GP at right. a local clinic. Go to your GP, go to your gynecologist, mm -hmm. go to your surgeon, go to any doctor or any, or any person who is trained in at least examining you. What All I right. also want to say is that women need to be aware of their breasts as well. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not asking you to be paranoid, but if any time you detect something, then, you don't get it investigated. All right. Um, I have to I have to now sure. give you the platform. Thank you, Doc. Stacey tell me a little bit about the run walk, the 5K run walk. The proceeds will be going where and what should we do? Well, majority of the proceeds will be going to the Jamaica Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. We also give back to cancer survivors. Last year, we were able to give back to four women who are struggling with breast cancer. And we're also able to give back, last year we were also able to give back to the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Excellent. And so the proceeds of the walk is mainly to support persons who are struggling with cancer. Because the reality is cancer is expensive to fight. Mm -hmm. And because it is expensive to fight, we need to provide avenues that we can assist persons to support. So our theme this year, for the run walk is support the fighters, admire the survivors, and honor the taken. And the reality is we all know or personally have been touched somehow with cancer. Mm. And this club, Kiwanis Club of Providence, Montego Bay, this is our 10th year, and so it's going to be a big family 5K breast cancer awareness run walk, and we're just encouraging everybody to support. Even if you can't walk, you can pledge, and we have our pledge cards. Yes. And you can make a donation. So tell us where we contact you, and the date is Sunday, October 27. At 6 a.m.? At 6 a.m. Yes. And we're leaving from where? Okay, so we start at, the route is from Scotiabank, Right across Scotiabank, where? Scotiabank, Montego Bay, right. Fairview. I'm sorry, I'm blind. <laughs> so, right. Where is Scotia? Fairview. <laughs> Fairview. S Scotiabank, yes. Fairview. Yes. And we, it's 5K from Scotiabank up to Gl the Gloucester Avenue. Mm -hmm. And we go from K back all the way up to KFC and back down. So it's 5K. It's <laughs> not Gloucester. Know, it's away. But anyway. <laughs> Elise Aldemir. I'm it's sorry. It's <laughs> Elise Aldemir Drive. Okay. Oh all right. My. Yes, 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 right. yes. So we, okay. So give me the information. We can call. Uh, tell me the number where we can call. It's 833-6883. Okay. And we can get more information sure. about the run. Yes. And the proceeds will go to the hospital. Cornwall Regional, Hospital, Cornwall Regional Hospital, Jamaica Cancer Society, Jamaica Cancer and persons who are 
struggling with breast cancer. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Your pink thank lipstick you is popping. Thank you. <laughs> Doc, thank you so much. Stacey Ann Williams, attorney at law and president of the Kiwanis Club of Providence. Montego Bay, Montego yes. Montego Bay. That's where the run will be as we look at joining our survivors, admiring them, honoring them, and supporting the fight against breast cancer. Wow, ah, Doc, it's crazy. Uh, thank you so much for joining us as well, Dr. Anthony Roberts. Thank you. Thinking about all the people we've lost to breast cancer. We need to fight. We need to find the answer. You do.